this site is actually a pit at one time. And this pit closed back in the 60s. It was then taken over by the oil and gas industry. When I started here, it was uh, jackets, top size for uh, it was oil fields, but they went into the renewables now. It's kind of the same work, you know. We're actually building the things that go into the, onto the seabed. And then the turbine sits on top of it. It's quite a crucial component to the renewable sector. Currently we're doing a job for CB heavy lifting. By far, reckon that we owed a few million pounds from them for work that we've already completed and apparently they're refusing to pay it. So we're now in a position where there's no more money coming in. The guys are actually working at the moment without any wages. We're coming into work, we're working as normal. We believe that they're trying to shut it down so they can maybe come in here themselves and use this yard to their own benefit with obviously the resources that are already in it. They've got a history of going in, making a company go bust and then taking over that company themselves for their own benefits. We're just kind of stopping anything going in or out this yard just to keep this yard open for us till we find a solution. Either somebody comes in here and puts some funds up for us. The Scotland being one of the top co countries for renewables, I think they should be looking into try and keep this open because there's work coming out for renewables. I think they should be trying to get work to come into this yard. This is your sort of last major employer that's going to be in Fife. 1,400 is the effect on just for Bifab alone, over 2,000 in the supply chain. They've got apprentices in here just now that could come out as good training because they're getting trained with it boys that serve their time in here. All these um, highly trained tradesmen have been at this for years. They're going, all this experience is all going to be lost. If you had not taken the stand that you have, if you had not occupied those yards, I promise you your yards were closed on Monday. You're an absolute inspiration to, to the Scottish trade union movement and I hope the people of Scotland are proud of you. <laughs> Workers fighting back opens a window of opportunity to talk about a different kind of society. The problem at the moment is it doesn't look like there's any kind of plan. You know, okay, the Scottish Government bans fracking. What does it mean? They hand over to Ineos the right to bring in uh, shale oil and, and everything from all over the world. When 100,000 jobs disappear in the North Sea, what is the plan? What's the plan for the other fields that have not been developed? We want all fuels that are damaging the planet kept in the ground. But on a short-term basis, we could build up funds that's necessary to build that future. The Scottish Government has recently had a big consultation over future energy policy. And we got together a group of people to put in a submission to that, looking after the jobs of people who are currently employed in defence and construction and the oil industry and so on, making the best use of their skills, not putting them on the scrap people. We face a continuing economic crisis, of which probably the most important result is mass unemployment in many, many parts of the world. We have to have another way of providing energy for the world. All of those ways of providing energy for the world take much more jobs, much more work, <laughs> than burning coal. Climate jobs only means jobs that make a real contribution to reducing carbon dioxide emissions. Globally, we think about 120 million jobs. Trident is the most extreme example. We're now talking about an expenditure of the Trident replacement program of around 250 billion pounds. The number of jobs that are directly employed around Trident and the west of Scotland is a few hundred. If you take all of the kind of knock-on jobs, maybe you're up to about 20,000. It's equivalent of 100,000 extra nurses over the period of the next 20 years or so. Many of the people who work at Faz Lane and Coolport have the kinds of skills which are actually relatively easily transferred into renewable energy. The very early developments around uh, wave and tidal were developed actually here in Edinburgh by a guy called Stephen Salter back in the 70s. He estimates that the channel that runs around the north of Scotland is the potential to generate more electric power than is required for the whole of Europe. When you look at the kind of money that's been invested in wave and tidal power, typically 5 million, 10 million, you start thinking about 250 billion and what would become possible and what that would then mean in terms of jobs. The Scottish Government is going to introduce um, a new company, Scottish Energy Company, to try and um, reduce fuel poverty. These are positive things, but if they're not taken on the scale necessary, 
there will be only sticking plasters on a broken leg. Outside the central belt, between 60 and 70 percent of over 60 year olds live in houses which they can't afford to heat in the winter. We know how to insulate houses, we know how to build houses which are energy efficient. If we had a program of mass insulation we would create a very large number of jobs and we would make a huge difference to a lot of people's lives. Many of us have been campaigning over the environment, trying to tie it to workers' demands. We're beginning to see the possibilities of the reality from the paper to the street, to the factory, to the demands for the rank and file to have a different kind of world and a different kind of future which guarantees them terms and conditions but also guarantees them a better world. This land is your land.